in there actually. There's heaps in there. It's a flock. about having to get out and open the gate. Oh, the humanity. Oh, it's so hard. Oh, no. Oh, man. We've arrived here at Cape Le Grand, um camping area, uh, beach, and we're just waiting for um, people to leave because it's a nice big site for us. We had an option of another one, but it was going to be a bit tighter to get into, so we chose the easy option. Um, came in because it's bloody cold out there with that wind, and uh, put a jumper on. Guess what happened when I walked in the door? I found this. This is what I found. Somehow, for the first time in a year and a half, our fridge door didn't hold. We didn't even go on any dirt, corrugated, rough road. It smells like pickles. Just what I want to do when I'm here at this amazing beach. I have to clean up the fridge mess.
right, we've come in to explore just a little and we've come around, I don't know, five minute drive to Hellfire Bay because we've heard it's lovely. It's uh, beautiful. It's, it's a nice little rock that you can climb up as well and get a bit of an overview. Nice. And the water is so blue all the way in. Like it doesn't just, even though it's got the whitewash, it still say, stays blue. <laughs> like it's so nice. And the white sand. Squeaky white sand. Squeaky white sand. It's like, it's like powder. It's not sand, it's powder. <laughs> Quite so. Yes. So, oh my god, so good. We've taken the uh, short 15 minute one way trip around to Little Hellfire Bay. Um, it's actually really nice here because it's protected from the wind. But I'm not sure if it was worth the walk. <laughs> awesome though, so if you are into walks and things like that and you want, or you've got extra time you want to see something else, it's definitely an easy walk. Aria nailed it easily. Where are we off to next? Uh, might check out Lucky Bay. In the Lucky sun. Bay? Yeah, we better hit Lucky Bay in the sun and blue sky. Basically isolated that 
and don't know if the fault is still happening. Yeah, there's still issues. I might just try. So every time we put a fuse in this little thing, it, it um. Sure, the fuse breaks the fuse. Yeah. Another update? <laughs> yeah, it started really raining, so I retreated to the truck for a few minutes to see if it goes away. Yeah, bless me. There's only a little couple of spots on the thing, but they're going to keep coming and going, according to the radar, so yeah. Yeah, God, Bushmans. Good times. Good times. <sighs> Bushmans, we've come into a confined space and Bushmans all over us because there was March fires biting us. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one thing after another. <laughs> um, there is a bit of blue sky coming. Maybe um, maybe it'll start to clear up again. Anyway, continue this little adventure. All right. <laughs> Amanda got sick of filming it, so um, it's like two hours later. So it's not capturing the engine noise. Okay. Um, I started undoing all the stuff off the battery. Didn't do anything. Still we literally blowing. tested each one as we did it. Tested each one as we did it. Still blowing the fuses. Got to about four fuses left, and we're like, we can't keep doing this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, started reaching out to other people. So there's an Iveco 4x4 owners group on Facebook. So if you follow um, us, because you've got an Iveco, you yeah. also need to make sure you're on that page. <laughs> there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, which is what I posted on. Because there's some mechanics and stuff on there, and some really knowledgeable people. Uh, and we had a few suggestions to check, like the body computer, which I checked and it didn't fix it. Uh, they said check some solenoids, which I think I checked, but I couldn't work it out. Uh, and then someone just posted and said check your electric mirrors, the motion, the movements on the electric mirrors, because they had that fail, uh, something in the wiring harness electric mirror, and it caused a similar issue. So I was like, all right, I'm cool. Trying everything else. Checked your electric bad. mirrors, and yeah down on the driver's side wasn't working so I fiddled around with the wires and stuff and then I uh, got it it started working and then I chucked a new fuse in it didn't blow and it didn't blow and then the truck started when I tried to start it so freaking mirror wire electric mirror wire has caused us two hours short. of yeah. this shit on the side of the road <laughs> yeah so yeah probably that's so random, I can't believe thank, it. Honestly, thank God we've had reception and we can post onto that Facebook group. Like, if we were in somewhere, we wouldn't have even thought to even consider an electric mirror at all. So, you can hear our lovely truck in the background. She's going. You can yay. We did get to the point of um, heaps of people stopped and asked if we were okay. We kept checking anyone an auto electrician, anyone an auto electrician. But everyone was we like, nah, nah, nah. We had called up NRMA for a tow. Already. Yeah, we have literally, literally just called up um, NRMA for a tow because we got to the point of we have no idea anymore. It's beyond our control. So, um, so that's where we got to after two hours of trying everything that everyone suggested and everything we knew and we were not getting anywhere. It was like, okay, I guess we're getting towed. We called a local mechanic to say, hey, can we come to you? And he's like, I'm not going to be able to help you with electrics. So you have to try another dude. We tried all the auto electricians. They weren't answering their phones just to find out if we could get to them. And we were kind of feeling a bit like, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then this little message, check your mirrors, came through. Anyway, we're actually heading over to Lucky Bay, which is only a 10 minute drive. So These are all the fuses that I blew testing. <laughs> I think it's more than that. I think I've been here a couple already. <laughs> um, but we're going to Lucky Bay. We will, fingers crossed, God help us if it happens again. Um, at least we'll be in a campground <laughs> at a beach, <laughs> not in the middle of bloody nowhere. Look. <laughs> oh, God. Ah, and we made it to Lucky Bay. <laughs> um, what a day so far. Oh, my gosh. Uh, anyway, we're here. And the sun is trying to come out. And we've chosen 
site number 40. So it's pre-booked but unallocated um, sites here. So we had a booking, but then when you get here, you just got to rock up and pick your site. Um, so we had a couple to choose from. We chose site 40 because it's nice and big. We stayed hitched up. And we're off the road, just, just. Um, and when you come back here to where the caravan is, you can look outside to see Lucky Bay from the windows. So we liked this one. We were going down a bit closer to the water, but we didn't have a view down there. So we decided that we'd um, come back up here a bit higher and get a view. Um, so yeah, we're going to go for a quick drive on the beach because it's super windy. I don't really feel like walking, but we might go for a drive for a bit and then um, maybe get out and have a walk once we're down there. Um, the facilities here are really nice. Um, same as Cape Le Grand Beach Camp. Um, the toilets and camp kitchens and stuff are actually really nice. So your money when you do pay for your pay, um, parks pass and stuff like that does definitely may, um, keep them uh, facilities facilities maintained um, here, which is good. Also, a note: there is only a teeny tiny bit of the reception here if you're standing in a certain spot. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's Optus. Um, maybe is it better or slight? It, there's a slight bit of Telstra, but with our internet setup put that up and you will get internet so for those of you that have our kit this is one of those spots you definitely need your internet kit if you haven't got our internet kit overlandexposure.com.au get yourself an internet kit um, that's pretty much it it's a pretty standard WA parks thing camp um, I'm gonna show you the view from the window We're taking the quick opportunity while the sun has popped its little face out uh, to take a quick landscape capture and admire the epic, epic view. It's absolutely mind boggling how gorgeous this place is. Evening. Thought I might show you guys a quick and easy caravan meal that we do that you guys might enjoy as well. 
Um, super, super, super easy. So this is Chinese dumplings in a soup. And we also do another variation of beef pho, which is a Vietnamese dish, which is delicious. And what you need is, for the Chinese dumpling one, you need some of this, which is a secret. These, these are quite new. They have a, this is the Chinese dumpling soup one, and then they also have a Vietnamese pho one, which is good. So with the Chinese dumpling one, you literally put that in a saucepan to boil, and then you put frozen dumplings that you buy into the soup, and then you put veggies. So I've got some bok choy, carrot, and broccoli to go into this one. And yeah, uh, with the pho one that we do, you can either slice up beef or chicken and put it in, or you can buy pre-made, um, like pre-cooked Chinese pork or something like that, and just put that in with veggies again. So super quick and easy caravan meal. Um, at the boat ramp, they can't get their uh, car back out of the thing, so um, 